This here is the radio in a 1993 or 20-year-old Prowler 5th wheel. My 20-year-old Prowler 5th wheel. And it is so god-awful barely functional at this point that it's just time to replace it. Now, as you can see, it's the size of a VCR, although when you open it up, it's only about yay deep. Half the buttons don't work, and we've been resorting to things like, you know, FM transmitters for several years now just to keep her going. At this point, it doesn't even receive very well, and, you know, it's... You can still buy these. You really can. Uh, they're quite expensive, and they're the size of a VCR, but... It, it seems ignorant to, you know, intentionally pay to limit your functionality. So instead, we're going with your standard 12-volt car replacement. Pioneer DEH 3400UB. It's going to do our iPods. Uh, we don't actually do MP3 flash drives, but, you know, if we did, if we wanted to, it's got an auxiliary port. It's got everything we need, plus it has, you know, colors, lots of colors, because I guess that's important. That certainly was simple enough. It was held in with two screws behind two little plastic caps. There actually were spots for four screws and four plastic caps, but they went ahead and they decided, four, that's for suckers. Here she is in all of her glory. Wonderful. Hey, look at that. They even went so far as to give us a wiring harness that not only has enough wire to run it outside, but it is marked. God bless those nice, nice people who put this in. It's actually marked. What a frickin' waste of space. Boy, I wonder if I can, uh... What you doing, buddy? Good job. All right, so here is the face plate. Just gotta cut out the marks. I don't think you can see them in the camera, but they're right there. So, uh, probably drill four corner holes and then get out jigsaw and have at it. There it is mounted. Now, the way you hold these in, obviously, is to bend these tabs out. But because it was never designed to clamp to something this thick, you might have to shim it up. So I'm going to come along with a small piece of wood and shim up this side. And what that'll do, not only will it give the base some support, but uh, it'll, it'll let me bend these upper tabs over and really hold it into place. Here's the face plate clamped up to that new side rail because I see no reason in giving the new radio that entire compartment. This, I, I mean, it won't be much, but it'll be enough to store candles or flashlights or... DVDs or, or whatever, you know, it'll be 12 inches deep and 7 inches wide. I will say this about the Pioneer DEH 3400 USB radio. It has very, very poor wiring documentation. So I went on Fixia and got the proper wiring diagram for it. Um... Or maybe it was something that was missing from my box. I don't know. It just wasn't there. The other thing you could find in one of these old camper radios, and I don't know if the new ones are like this. I doubt it, but it, you know, this thing's 20 years old, is bundled negatives. So the orange one here is all the negatives for the left-hand speakers, front and rear. And the white one is right-hand speakers, front and rear. It's one of the reasons why you do probably want to get a cheaper radio. Because if your radio runs some sort of self-diagnostic, it, it's probably going to trip on this. Um, it's not something I thought of when I purchased that. And I, I don't, it was pretty cheap. I doubt it's going to do a self-test, but it might. And I don't know what I'll do if, uh, I guess I'll go find a cheaper radio. I bet it's fine. We'll find out here in a bit. Okay. Gonna plug her in, see how we did. Hey, it looks like it came on okay. There's really no point in setting it up right now. 
So that's basically what it's going to look like. Obviously the radio will be in there. This goes back in there. I don't know. I'd rather have the storage. You know how it is in a camper. I'd rather have the storage than not. This will get a, a cleat on the inside, obviously, that that'll screw to there. Face plate will screw those two spots right along there. And that'll be enough to hold it. I'll have to put a little tower and hold the radio up. Because the radio doesn't have a regular on-off, and the camper doesn't have a key switch, um, this is going to be the on-off. And I will tie that into what would have been the ignition switch wire for the car. And so this will simulate turning on the key so the radio will come on and then flick it off and the radio will go off. But rather than breaking the whole power, I'll still get to keep my memory stuff. I don't know what I took that switch out of. Took it out of something. And I got a helper. You say hi? Here's the basket installed. And you can see those tabs, they're like a wedge, a door wedge. So they kind of tighten up the basket as you fold them out. At least they're supposed to. That's held in very securely. Though I will still have to come up with a riser or a stand for the back of the radio to sit on. So here's the modification we've made. I have taken the uh, the key switch wire. This is the one that would have went to the ignition. And I'm going to run it to that switch right there. I don't want to switch the big wire, which would flat out turn it off. Because then it will go into to demo mode. Uh, you know, because they're all hardwired into demo now. So if, if you kill power completely, you start from scratch. It would be fine if it was just a clock. You could ignore it. But the radio doesn't even function until you've taken it out of demo mode and reprogrammed it. So I want to do that as, as, as little as possible. I'm going to have to do it every year because we disconnect the batteries in the wintertime. But I don't, <laughs> I don't want to have to do it every time I click it off. So this is how it works, demonstrated by my helper. Hey, can you turn it off? Can you turn it off? Good work. Can you turn it back on for me? Good job. So, this way, this way I don't have to reset it every single time. The very last modification is simply to add a, a block here. Just to pick up the back weight of the, the radio so that it can't hammer and bounce and jump. And the one side will be fine. Well, turns out it does have an off button. Not a, exactly standard, but it's it's right there. You can see that little white blur that says off. So I missed that. Still like this better, I think. Comes back up to where it was. Right there. Maybe I am getting too old for this shit. There it is, all done. Uh, I mean, granted, the storage compartment isn't exactly huge, but holds things. Real oak. I managed to match the fake oak pretty well. Better turn that off before YouTube nails me on copyright. One thing I, I, I didn't point out, but I just left it, is there's this gap right in here. It's about an inch. That's fine, because these radios get hot, and that'll give the heat some place to go. I think if yours was completely sealed up, it'd probably still be okay. But if yours is open like this, don't go too crazy trying to seal it, because that's you want the airflow. One last touch up, and we're ready to rock. So here's a pro tip to help you disguise your installation a little better. All right? It's pretty common. Uh, have a screwdriver slip or a drill tear out or something and, and leave a mark on your finished product. Just dip a Q-tip and whatever you've got it. If you did stain, you need to dip it in stain. This is clear sealed, so this is just some polyurethane. Blot it around. Wipe it off. Try not to get paper towels stuck in it. 
come on and it uh, does a great job of masking where things might have gone not according to plan and now it's done